What's going on everyone? So yesterday was the first preseason game for the Lakers and was even more apparent that the Lakers need a center, right? I mean, there was a stretch where we had to go Rui at the five with four guards out there, which look, it's preseason, right? JJ Redick even talked about how he was going to do some little wacky lineups. Just, you know, you, now's the time to experiment. Now's the time to kind of like try different things. But it also is in part of we don't have any other bigs outside of Jackson Days. You had Anthony Davis and you had Christian Wood both out, right? And so it's like, well, you go with Castleton, but he's probably not playing any games this season, if any. And then Kyler Kelly, right, who both got some runs at some point, but those, again, are two guys that aren't really going to be on the basketball court, right? So it made sense that J.J. Redick would go with, like, a Rui at the five uh, with – you know, four guards or, you know, try different uh, iterations of lineups with Rui at the five because those are the guys that are going to be on the roster. And Christian Wood is out you know, a month, maybe two. Right? I know he seems like he's inching closer and closer and, and his process of recovery is kind of moving quickly, which is good. But still, it is a concern, right? And you don't want to rush him back. And Anthony Davis and Jackson Hayes are your only centers. Christian Coloco, he's not cleared yet. When is that going to happen? Right? I mean, we're already in preseason. Like, when are you going to finally sign off on Christian Coloco? Right? So it's like, there could be a stretch you know, early in the season where, you know, what if Jackson Hayes you know, rolls his ankle or something? And it's like, oh, you got his Anthony Davis. Like, what are you going to do? You're going to play Anthony Davis 48 minutes? No, you, you got to... Figure something out with Rui or have LeBron at the five or, you know, you know Cam Reddish or something because he's six eight got a 7-2 wingspan, right? Like, you have to try to figure different things out. And so the Lakers, again, I mean, they need a center. I'm okay with the Lakers being patient and finding trades. We've seen other GMs. Like, a lot of people get on Rob Palenka for talking about how you know, like, oh, the CBA, the CBA, the CBA. But you're hearing a lot of GMs starting to come out and go, hey, this CBA is incredibly restrictive. The Knicks, who just did and had to you know, jump through hurdles to get a trade done, just talked about how crazy it, the CBA is and how difficult it is to pull things off, right? And it's just like, unless you're getting an impact guy, right? Like, if the Lakers could go get Steph, then I could see them jumping through similar hurdles to go get that piece. Are you doing that for a Jeremy Grant? No. Are you doing that for a Cam Johnson? No. Are you doing that for even like a Walker Kessler? No. Right? Like, you want those to be straightforward trades. Now, obviously, the Lakers are in a very different position, but I'm talking to just generalize, right? Like, the new CBA is restrictive. Be patient. Wait for the right trades. And there's nothing wrong with taking the time to evaluate this team. See, you know, through the first, like, Rob Blake said, first 30 games. Okay, fine. Take the first 30 games. Evaluate what do you desperately need. All right? Obviously, we need a center. That's obvious. JJ Reddick's talked about it. Rob Polinka's aware of it. We need a center. I don't see that magically changing. All right? But beyond that, what else do you need? All right? Do you need a Jeremy Grant? All right? If you do still need a Jeremy Grant, then maybe you're going to get in Jeremy Grant and Robert Williams. Maybe you don't. Right? Maybe you just need, you know, Robert Williams, and then you're gonna go pull off this trade here. Maybe you are getting Valanchunas and you're going to get into Bruce Brown or something, right? Like I'm okay with the Lakers staying patient, waiting to find the the right trade, the right moves. Look, Rob Blinka said point blank, look, we're trading the picks. We're open to trading the picks. I mean, he put out the the bat signal to the rest of the league, right? And said, we'll even trade a first for a marginal move. This wasn't like, hey, we're only trading first for stars. We're only trading first for, you know, all-star caliber. But no, he said even a marginal move will trade a first because he is, should be aware, as many of us are, that we need more than just one trade, right? You're probably going to have to take a first, get like a Jeremy Grant, and then take another first and go get, you know, a Wendell Carter Jr. or something like that, right? Like, you're going to need to get multiple pieces. Getting like a Jeremy Grant, yeah, it makes you better, but how much better, right? So... Take the time to evaluate, but center, I mean, if you can get a center today, I think you get a center today. Like, center is the one thing that I don't see changing, right? Center is the one thing that I don't think you're going to be like, oh, well, now we don't need that, right? Like, I, just from what we've seen and the, and the lack of big bodies, right? So to me, go get a center, right? If you want to be patient about everything else, 
Now, if you want to wait and see, do we do we really need a point of attack guard more? Or is Max Christie ready for that? Right? Because Max Christie looked great in, in the first preseason game. And defensively was just out there putting in work. Right? Are you kind of like, hey, you know what? Like, you know, between Gabe Vincent, between Max Christie, um, you know, even Jalen Trufino defensively showed some stuff, right? Like between those guys, you kind of have enough point of attack defense, right? I obviously you want to see not just preseason, you want to see regular season, what they're able to do on the defensive side of things uh, during the regular season. So, you know, take the time to evaluate, take the time to really look at that. That's fine, right? Maybe you don't need a wing, right? Maybe between, maybe you do start Jared Vanderbilt, and because you're running a motion offense, which we saw a ton of just real sets, real actions, guys just weren't hitting shots, but you saw the improvements as far as the offense goes. And it's like, okay, well, now that you have that, maybe Jared Vanderbilt can be serviceable offensively. You know, obviously a shooting is still going to be a liability, but maybe he can, you know, contribute and give you 12 points a game. I mean, Darvin Ham was able to make Jared Vanderbilt an, a, 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 you know, a viable offensive option. <laughs> right? I think J.J. Redick and this coach staff will be able to do the same thing. So, you know, maybe between Rui and Jared Vanderbilt, you're able to kind of solve that. And it's like, ah, you know, we're better off just keeping these guys than Jeremy Grant, right? And it's like, okay, well, we really need Bruce Brown, right? Let's go. Like, yeah, you could take the time for everything else. I'm all for that. Take the time for guys. Wait for the right trade to develop. But go get a center if you can, right? Like, I don't see that changing. Now, obviously, trades are a two-way street, right? Like, you need both sides to agree. You need both sides willing to, to do so, And, you know, which center option are you giving up a first four that we know is available? Again, Walker Kessler, I would give up a first four because it's not only, it doesn't only help now, it helps long term. And with that pick, you're hoping to get a guy like Walker Kessler. So to me, if you get a Kessler, sure, go do that. But outside of that, like Clint Capella is available, you're not giving up a first for him. When Valanchunas becomes available, you're not giving up a first for him. Uh, Robert Williams is too high of a risk. I'm not giving up a first for him. Mitchell Robinson's being shopped around. Again, not giving up a first for him. Um, you know, Wendell Carter Jr., I, I would probably give up a first for just because of his age and his versatility to play the four and the five. But we don't even know if he's really available. Teams have touched base. Teams have talked, but a lot of conversations about a lot of different players get talked about and bases touched and you know, and it never ends up happening. So, you know, we don't even know if he's available. So you look at the landscape, and none of these guys are available. So it's like, how incentivized are some of these teams to trade their centers, especially when the season hasn't even began? You, know, you got a lot of guys in preseason. But if I'm Rob, I, you at least are pushing, right? Especially after seeing that first preseason game, you're at least calling and being like, "Hey, you know, I just touch, do another round, touch base. Like, hey, you know, like before we get into the regular season." Is there, is there room to pull something off here? I mean, you still have the Knicks looking to make trades. The Knicks are targeting Marcus Smart. It's like, like, go on, like, do something, right? Like, so hopefully the Lakers are doing their due diligence still, hopefully still being active. I mean, Rob Polinka talked about how he's going to continue to work hard, he's continue to, because, you know, that's his job to try to find these trades. So, you know, I trust his word. I, I believe in, in what he's saying, right? Again, we've had others back up his sentiment, right? Like, it's not like Rob Blink is the only one over here standing around going like, oh man, like you can't pull off any trades, right? Like, you have several GMs, including a GM that just had to jump through insane hoops to pull off Carl Anthony Towns' trade. Again, the big difference between Carl Anthony Towns and the, and the missing piece to potentially win you a championship and Jeremy Grant, Bruce Brown, right? Like, these guys, it's just, it's not the same, right? Like, if the Lakers could, like if Steph became available tomorrow and was like, I only want to go to the Lakers, then yeah, I think the Lakers would jump through the same hoops and would do whatever it takes to go get him. And they would figure out what they need to figure out in order to get him. But that's not what's on the table right now. It's a bunch of like, you know, slightly upgraded role guys, which is fine, right? LeBron James and Anthony Davis have shown that they're good enough with the right pieces to win a championship, right? Even at LeBron's age and stuff like that, right? So, you know, like, Go get two quality role guys. I mean, look at Dallas, right? Kind of, like, are they going to miss the playoffs again to, like, they get Daniel Gafford, they get P.J. Washington, they start figuring stuff out, and next thing you know, you look up and they're in the finals, right? So, you know, I think the same, a similar thing can happen with the Lakers, but you got to find that thing. But in the meantime, if you can get a center, if you can get somebody, right, like, 
anybody, well, not anybody, but you get my point, right? Like, get somebody that can come in, slot in, so we don't have to, you know, if Anthony Davis has the night off, we have to now play Rui at the five for 25 minutes. Like, I don't want to see that. Again, preseason, it's fine. Preseason, you want to experiment. You want to get a look at that. You want to see how does that look? How does this shape up? You know, if we ever in a pinch need to do that, right? Or, you know, certain like say we're playing the Warriors and they got Draymond at the five, right? Like how do you, you know, and we need, we want to get some rest for uh, AD, right? Like, okay, well, let's, what does it look like with Rui and these four guys? What does it look like with, you know, Braun and these four guys? Again, now's the time to experiment. If you're ever going to experiment, experiment now when the wins losses don't matter rather than going into the, the regular season and now you're experimenting. Obviously, there's still going to be some experimentation early on, just, you know, key guys stuff. But talking about like the wacky lineups, you don't really want to do the wacky lineups too much, if ever, in the regular season. You want to kind of have, OK, these are these are my eight or nine guys, 10 guys, whatever that you're going to operate with and then in a pinch if we have to, then we can default to this lineup that we did in preseason. But Lakers need a center. Go get a center. But as always, this is a discussion, and I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Do you agree? Do you think, like, yes, Lakers need a center this time yesterday? Do you think, no, like, still be patient, let things play out? Um, it just was very apparent in that first preseason game that, like, hey, Lakers could use a center. But however you feel, whatever your thoughts are, love it. Let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me out. Helps me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.